Hey, Josh, just uh, with the, you're on the last day of what's a four day break um, between games. And I think for the rest of the season, you have at most two games before or two days before games. I'm just wondering with this break, just what you felt like you guys were able to accomplish if it came at a right time, um, just given how well you guys have been playing with momentum and whatnot. And um, yeah, that's it. Hey, Jeff, um, I think uh, obviously, you know, uh, four day breaks in, in the NHL uh, are, are rare, even in a normal season. Um, you see two sometimes and, and rarely three, but um, not often four. So, you know, I think we tried to make the most of it, get some rest. Uh, looking ahead, the schedule um, is going to be pretty uh, intense, especially it seems the farther we go in the season, you know, we play more and more games. So, uh, I think our practices were, um, you know, really uh, um, calculated. We had the stuff we were doing, the drills we were doing, um, you know, had good reason to them. And uh, there's obviously uh, a lot to like about our game, but there's a lot of things that we can improve um, so early on in our season. So, um, you know, I think we tried to make the most of it and, uh, um, you know, we need to be able to ramp it up uh, after coming out of this break uh, for tomorrow night. We'll go next to Mitch Clinton from Jets TV. Go ahead, Mitchell. Thanks, Gregor. Uh, hi, Josh. Just curious from a teammate standpoint, obviously there's a lot of curiosity about what, what uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois will bring to the to the group and game action. Just from a teammate standpoint, what kind of uh, intrigue is there from you guys as you prepare for your next game against Calgary? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting uh, to have him into the fold, obviously. Um, you know, we haven't had the chance to play them a ton over the years, um, given we're in different conferences. But um, I always remember, you know, not liking uh, playing against him, um, you know, remembering how he protects the puck really well down low. Obviously, he's um, a big guy and uh, he's got really good hands and, and um, you know, puck skills sort of around the net and, and down low. So as a defenseman, it was always a challenge to play against him. Um, it's exciting to obviously bring him in and have him in, you know, uh, sort of a delayed um, uh, entry into the locker room with the quarantine. So it was nice to finally have him. I'm sure for him, it was nice to, to actually be able to, uh, you know, come to the rink and, and get to know the guys and, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, he's looked great in the practices and uh, I'm sure that, um, you know, as he goes along, as he plays more, um, he's just going to keep getting better and better. He's got all the skills and talent and, you uh, you know, seems like a great guy um, from getting to know him these last few days. So I'm um, really excited to have him. Um, excited to have another elite centerman, um, you know, to, to work with uh, as a defenseman and uh, um, you know, excited to see what he can do um, as he gets going with our team. And just a couple more for Josh. We'll go next to Kelly Moore from CJOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Rigger. Morning, Josh. Or yeah, almost good afternoon. Um, just further along with what you were talking about there, uh, adding another uh, center. Uh, and I'm just wondering, is it over? Do we maybe make too big of a deal out of it? Uh, you know, with the fact that, uh, you know, the defensive zone percentages for face-offs are as low as they are. And uh, how much of an impact does that have on you as defensemen in particular, having to spend that extra time inside the blue line? And do you see what the way the lines are structured now that could improve going forward here. Hey, Kelly. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the percentages um, that you're referencing uh, in terms of um, th those numbers. I'm not sure. I don't think that it's been brought up to me before um, in any questions, but uh, certainly adding a player of his ability um, and size down the middle is always welcome. Uh, you know, I, I, I personally feel not so much off, I mean, obviously having great face off um, uh, players is huge, but, you know, uh, I think more, more what's great as a defenseman is, you know, that relationship between the low three players, the two defensemen and the centermen uh, is vital defensively. Obviously, sometimes, you know, um, with the game just being played, the, you know, a winger will come low um, based on the back check or, uh, certain things happen, switch offs, et cetera. But uh, certainly the majority of the time, it's the centerman working down there. So, um, you know, having uh, uh, that relationship uh, beyond point is is huge and something that makes 
um, my job as a defenseman a lot easier. Uh, I think what's exciting about him is, like I said, his attributes in the offensive zone are are the same type of things he can do in the D zone. Big guy, protect the puck, um, you know, win little battles when someone's draped all over him because he's strong and he's he's got great hands. So um, those type of things in that relationship um, takes time to develop. But certainly as a defenseman, it's always welcome to have, um, you know, those those big guys. He, he doesn't vacate the, the, you know, the defensive zone. You know, he plays, uh, um, he plays a consistent game and, and he just sort of, it's hard to explain, but he, he doesn't, you know, uh, fly through the zone he, he plays sort of controlled in that area so uh it, you know if a puck reacts one way or the other you know he can hop on it or or you can hit him in the middle it's just a couple of days in practice but i know that from playing against him and, and watching some video of him over the years so excited to to work with him there and final question to ted wyman go ahead wyman thanks gregor hey josh um you looked at last year and, uh, you know, obviously you guys weren't thrilled with the defensive game, maybe took a little while to get things going here, but it's looked pretty good the last few games. What have you been doing as a group better now than maybe at some of the other times? Hey, Ted. Well, I think, um, you know, I think we're playing as five, uh, you know, five in our own end. Um, one of the things that we wanted to focus on was um, having a, uh, five players tighter together in our own end um, and all over the ice, but certainly in our own end and um, allowing us, uh, if we do create a turnover or a kill play, as we've talked about, um, you know, you have a, a three or four or five foot pass, maybe two or three of those and you're out of the zone as opposed to being more spread out and, and having to, you know, make a 15, 20 foot pass and, and then another one after that, that and, and not being in sync. So, you know, being connected defensively, I think, is is vital, um, obviously, for breaking it out. But that same thing reigns true where, you know, if someone gets beat by, a, you know, a half step out of the corner, um, there's a second layer right there and a third layer right there as well. And, um, you know, you're getting some help from your your wingers in zone also on sticks in the slot and, and, and stuff like that. So you know, I think just playing more connected, I think we're doing a better job of that and um, committing to... Uh, you know, trying to uh, end it as fast as possible in our own end and, and get going in the other way as a group of five. And uh, when we've done that this year, we've been successful and it's still a work in progress, but I think we've made some pretty big strides.